Hi everybody, I am Dr. Sarah Gottfried. I'm the integrative physician who helps people balance their hormones naturally, regardless of age. And I wanna to talk today about feeling sexy after 40 with how you eat and how you live. Now, the cool thing is, this is not rocket science. This is not hard. There's actually really astonishingly simple tweaks that you can make to your nutrition and to your lifestyle that really make you feel sexy as you get older. I often have women in my practice. I have an integrative medicine practice in Berkeley, California, and I've seen about 20,000 women in the past 20 years. What I often hear from them is that they're overwhelmed, they're stressed out, they're cranky, depressed, fat, no sex drive. And what I find is that they usually have some hormonal imbalance, usually related to stress. Stress, we have an epidemic of stress, right? We know that 75% of Americans feel like they've got more stress than they know is healthy. And it's even higher if you're a caregiver, which is very common after the age of 40. Now, we could get complicated as we talk about the hormones, the brain chemicals, the biochemistry of how to stay sexy as we get older, but I don't wanna go there. I don't think you do either. What I think would be helpful is to really focus on what are the needle movers? What's proven in a scientific way to really help you stay sexy as you get older? Now, when I was 32, I was a complete stress case. I had my first child. I was in a difficult marriage. I was working hard as a full-time OBGYN, delivering babies all night long, doing hysterectomies during the day. I was a working mom, and like most working moms, I struggled. I felt overwhelmed. I felt mildly depressed. And I, I really felt like life was hard. It shouldn't be so hard. So that's how I felt at 32, and I went to a physician, went to my local doctor, and got treated with exactly the wrong thing. I got treated with an antidepressant, what's called an SSRI, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. What does that do? Oh, it makes you gain weight, can increase your risk of stroke, and now we know it increases your risk of breast and ovarian cancer. And my problem was not severe depression. Antidepressants work well if you have severe depression. I didn't have that. I had a bad case of stress. So I figured out how to heal myself. Fortunately, I had medical training and I was able to make myself into a guinea pig and figure out within a few months how to completely change my hormones naturally and my brain chemicals. And I wanna share with you how to do that in a much shorter amount of time. So let's talk first about some of the hormones that make you sexy. And when I say sexy, I don't mean that Madison Avenue version of the supermodel who's super skinny, anorexic maybe, and trying to look young. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about women stepping into their power, women who are really connected to pleasure. In fact, I think most of the women in my practice, when they first come to see me, they have rewired themselves to stress instead of pleasure. So I'm gonna show you how to turn that around today. These women who are sexy as they get older, they realize it's a choice. It's a choice. So there's this belief, maybe even your doctor believes this, maybe you believe it, that as we get older, it's normal to feel tapped out, exhausted, like you have no sex drive, like you're ready to close shop. <laughs> and the truth is, it's your choice. But if you're not proactively amplifying your sexiness as you get older, not amplifying that ownership and that sense of pleasure, then you are making the choice to become de-sexy, and I don't want you to make that choice. 
Now, when I think about sexiness, I think about three hormones in particular. I like to make this super simple. Those three hormones I call Charlie's angels. So what are they? They are cortisol, the main stress hormone, estrogen, which gives you hips and breasts and makes you flirty and juicy, and thyroid. Thyroid is the main driver of metabolism. It helps your weight be easy to control, and it helps your mood feel like it's optimal. So those three hormones, cortisol, estrogen, and thyroid, we want to be keeping those working for you, not against you. And by that I mean we want them to be in that Goldilocks position, not too high, not too low. The problem is women who are stressed, now we're talking about the women in my practice, right? And the way I used to be at 32, I'm 45 now. Women in my practice typically have high cortisol. So their stress level is high. They're managing a lot. And it's really something they struggle with. Here's an example. This past week I saw a woman named Julie. She is a 46-year-old woman. She's got two kids. One of them has a learning disability. She's married, her husband travels a lot, lives in Berkeley, and she came to me saying, I feel like I'm never enough. I'm a lawyer, I feel like I never give enough at work. At home, I feel like I never give enough to my children. And I certainly feel like I'm never enough in bed because my husband always wants sex and I just feel so exhausted. Once in a while, I agree to mercy sex, but honestly, it's the last thing on my mind. What we found with her was that her cortisol was high and her thyroid was borderline. So two of her angels, cortisol and thyroid, were off. They weren't working for her. What we did was two simple tweaks to get her cortisol back into the normal place. And when we did that, it also improved her thyroid. I saw her for the first time six weeks ago when she told me the story. I saw her again this week and she said, Dr. Sarah, those supplements you gave me, that tiara time you gave me, totally did the trick. I'm sleeping better, I wake up feeling restored, I still have the same stressors, but I'm able to cope differently. And I'm chasing my husband around the bedroom again. That hasn't happened for years. So I want to give you hope. You can also turn around your Charlie's Angels. Now let me tell you about some of the tips that I shared with her. Some tweaks to her nutrition and to her supplement regimen and the tiara time that really made a difference. So number one, this may be the most popular study ever on the hormone cortisol. So cortisol is that stress hormone that you probably know quite well. It's the one that makes you feel like you're in a crisis. So when you perceive a threat, like you almost get into a car accident, you get filled with cortisol. And cortisol is the hormone that really gets you focused and in action. It raises your blood sugar so you can think. It raises your blood pressure so you can run. It helps your immune system so that you can stay healthy. The problem with cortisol is that so many of us, especially women of a certain age, 40 plus, we find that we're chronically stressed. We don't manage it well. No one taught us how to manage it well. Now, I learned at age 32, that's when I became a yoga teacher, and I started studying herbal therapies, supplements, nutrition, movement that can help us with managing Charlie's Angels. So in what may be the most popular study ever with cortisol, it was found that chocolate, the humble cacao bean, which I have here, chocolate lowers cortisol. Now, I'm not talking about an entire bar of chocolate that has a lot of sugar. I'm talking about ideally raw cacao that has a very low sugar content. I like to actually eat cacao beans. I think they're delicious and they have no sugar at all. So we know that a small dose of chocolate, one to two squares a day, 
lowers your cortisol level. Isn't that fabulous? Now here's the second thing we did with my client. I gave her a cocktail, not the cocktail you're thinking. I gave her a cocktail of three different supplements, phosphatidylserine, rhodiola, and fish oil. These three supplements basically lower your cortisol. They're very well proven to do this. So my client started these supplements along with her dose of chocolate, and she started something called Tiara Time. Let me show you, show you what I mean by that. Tiara Time is when you put a tiara on your head and you claim self-care. It's a visual cue to your family, to your loved ones, that you are claiming time for yourself. And I find that so many women, especially between the ages of 35 and about 50 to 55, don't get enough self-care. They don't get the minimum effective self-care. And the result is that they're rewiring to stress. Cortisol is high and it never comes down. When you step into a calm position by putting the tiara on your head and reminding yourself and the people around you, that's how you get into the calm position again. It's cool, it's kind of like a toggle where you're either stressed and you're panting like a rabbit or you're calm and you're breathing deeply and your belly expands as you inhale. So here's what I suggested to my client. I wanted her to put a tiara on once a day and she could choose from an a la carte menu what to do with that time. She could take a hot bath. She could call a girlfriend. We know that women respond to stress differently than men and we get out of it differently than men. Men tend to go into fight or flight. Women tend to befriend. So it increases our oxytocin, it helps us manage stress, gets us out of that overwhelmed, hypervigilant, stressed out place. Maybe you sit on a cushion for five minutes and just do this belly breathing where you inhale, and your belly expands and you exhale. Maybe you watch a candle for two minutes that totally gets you into mindfulness. Whatever it is, I want you to toggle from stress to calm. We did that with my client and it made a dramatic difference. So back to sexy after 40. We just talked about cortisol and getting cortisol back into balance and how that helped her with her thyroid problem, her slow thyroid. How do you know if you have slow thyroid? Oh, 20% of the US population has this, most of it undiagnosed. And the way you know is that it can make you mildly depressed. It can hijack your sex drive, it can make your hair fall out. We know 50% of women over the age of 50 have hair loss. And it also makes you gain weight. So when I have a client who has a problem with her thyroid, let's talk about nutrition so that we can help her get her thyroid into balance. Coconut oil. Use coconut oil when you cook especially when you're cooking at moderate to high heat. It's very good for the thyroid. Your thyroid is this beautiful butterfly endocrine gland in your neck. And we wanna make sure that cortisol is under control because cortisol can slow down your thyroid function. And we wanna nourish it. We wanna make sure that you're getting the right amount of copper, zinc, selenium, iodine, not too much iodine, and if you have antibodies to your thyroid, something called autoimmune thyroiditis, you wanna be very careful with iodine and talk to your local doctor. One cool thing about hormone imbalance is that it's actually easier to get rebalanced than it is to live with the misery of being out of balance. So as you focus on how to feel more sexy over the age of 40, I want you to know that this is not hard. It's not a huge project. Most women I know who are overwhelmed, they don't want a huge project. They want this to be super simple. One other thing for your thyroid. We're talking about Charlie's Angels, your cortisol, thyroid, and estrogen, is shoulder stand. So we know in yoga that whenever you squish an organ, you know, imagine me upside down, shoulder stand where your 
squishing your thyroid and you're squishing out all that old stagnant blood and you hold it for whatever length of time you agree with your teacher to hold it for and then you release it you get this influx of fresh blood and that really helps you with your hormone balance. Another important thing to do with your thyroid is to really make sure that you have a normal vitamin D level. Now this is a really important one because there's a lot of controversy about vitamin D. But we also know that about 80% of the US population is low in vitamin D and that's the reason why we have so many issues with our bones as we get older. So I want you to manage your vitamin D level in your blood as carefully as you manage your retirement account. This is your neurohormonal dashboard that we're talking about. So on your dashboard, one of the line items is your vitamin D level. And we know that if you keep your level about between 52 and 90, that's gonna help you with metabolism. It's gonna help your thyroid work better. It's gonna keep your bones stronger. And it just might help you prevent breast cancer. Very important. Last angel is estrogen. Now estrogen is actually a big family of different types of chemicals. What we know with estrogen is we want you to use it and then lose it. You don't want estrogen moving around your body, stimulating receptors over and over again. That can lead to breast cancer. It can lead to endometriosis. It can cause a lot of different problems. So when it comes to estrogen, you wanna make good estrogens and get rid of the bad estrogens. Now, how do you do that nutritionally? I wanna give you a couple of tips here. Number one, beets. Beets are a fantastic liver tonic. What that means is that they really help you detoxify. Your liver is the place where estrogen is processed. You wanna get rid of the bad estrogens, filter it out of your blood, and then poop and pee it out. Beets are one way to do it. Helps you get rid of bad estrogens. Another way is fiber, fiber. Here's the deal. Women in the US on average get about 14 grams of fiber a day. That is abysmal. We've gotta do better than that. I want you to get between 35 and 45 grams of fiber a day. This isn't just me, Dr. Andy Weil also agrees with this. Here's what happens. When you get more fiber, it helps you get rid of those bad estrogens. Beets and fiber, very important. Last thing, is a supplement called diendolmethane, diendolmethane or DIM for short. And this helps you make more of the good estrogens and it helps you get rid of the bad estrogens. So you wanna follow the directions that are on the bottle that you use and you wanna make sure that it's bioavailable. But several randomized trials show that this really helps you with getting rid of bad estrogens. So I hope you've enjoyed this conversation about nutrition and lifestyle tweaks to really help you feel sexy over the age of 40. This is Dr. Sarah Gottfried and you can find me at sarahgottfriedmd.com.